But I do want to welcome in my first special guest uh, for this hour, and his Foot Locker CEO, Richard Johnson. And Richard, always nice to see you. Uh, I, I guess this is only fitting we start with you because I am, I think, standing nearby one of your stores in the city. Uh, what's your outlook for this for this holiday season? Well, Brian, it's always great to be here with you. And I would uh, echo, based on what my team has told me, the, the people are back out in New York City. So it's great to see, great to hear you affirm that. And, and you know, we're believers that the holiday is going to be strong. You know, we just uh, closed our third quarter, had a great quarter, got our inventories in position to get the holiday season off to a great start. Clearly, you know, some of the things that you talked about in your opening with supply chain and, and boats and ships docked off uh, the ports, We'll, we'll clearly uh, create some some opportunities for us. You know, we'll have to to, to be nimble and agile, but uh, we look forward to a good holiday season. Dick, I think I just realized that this is the first time I have talked to you not inside of my kitchen. Uh, so that is a different change of pace in terms of our conversations. Uh, but are you seeing, interesting uh, note right there that you mentioned, uh, what your team mentioned uh, is, are you seeing a big disparity between urban Foot Locker stores and suburban Foot Locker stores in large part because we have seen these tourist shoppers come back? Yeah, the, the, the move that I just talked about was really the tourist stores, right? You know, our suburban stores, our, mm -hmm. our borough stores in New York City have, have been on a pretty good run. But uh, the reality is that, that Midtown Manhattan, where we were missing some of that tourism, you know, has certainly uh, started to rebound. And we've seen it in, in other key uh, tourist cities around the, the, the country, certainly. So as the borders opened up, as airplanes were allowed to land with, uh, with foreign tourists in it, it certainly has been good in those marketplaces. And obviously, uh, New York gearing up for the parade on, on Thursday and all of the excitement that goes with Black Friday, you know, I think there, there's certainly going to be a lot of energy, but we're seeing it uh, across uh, the, the marketplace in the, the tourist cities, Brian. Well, let's not forget about the, the local shoppers that keep a lot of these stores open. I mean, you're entering this holiday season with a record-setting stock market. You have people that have uh, built up their savings. I think the U.S. savings rate is close to 10 percent. What are you seeing from that core U.S. shopper? Yeah, no, we, we've, uh, as you've seen in our results, we've posted good quarters throughout 2021. And the, that core shopper has a lot of energy around the products that we sell, you know, whether it be the high heat sneakers, whether it be, you know, that, that casual look, you know, we think that, that our consumer wants to be casual and comfortable and, and they continue to, to come into our stores. They continue to shop on our digital sites and our social network. And we continue to, to see a lot of positive from that core consumer, Brian. I like what you said, Dick, on, on the earnings call uh, a couple days ago. You mentioned that the consumer is, when they, come in, when they are coming into your store, they may not get their first choice of product, but they are finding their second. How severe are these supply chain bottlenecks? Well, we've been battling the supply chain for, you know, challenges for, a year, you know, almost a year now. Obviously, the shutdown in Vietnam and the, the slowdown in the ports that's been exaggerated a little bit, exacerbated a little bit as we got closer to the holiday puts a lot of pressure on the team to react and find, you know, other opportunities. But our, our consumer is very clearly, you know, out to shop. They, if, if they don't find their, their preferred style, color, size, they really are going to the next available. And that's one of the, the real benefits that we've got being a multi-branded retailer is that we've got a lot of partners that, that we can, you know, leverage our relationship with and, and find ways to get product into our stores. So again, you know, as I said uh, in our earnings call, we don't have a, a demand problem. The demand is out there and the consumers mm -hmm. looking for product. There's a little bit of a supply chain challenge that, uh, again, we've faced for literally the last year. And, you know, the team continues to do a great job finding ways around it and getting product that our consumers want into the stores, onto our sites, and ultimately on our customers' feet and, feed in, in, you know, their, their apparel choices as well. Do you think these supply chain issues did go away next year? I certainly think they start to, to 
go down a little bit. You know, certainly the production environment in, in South Vietnam should get healthier. You know, the factories are open and ramping up, ramping up so we, we think that there will be flow. You know, I think that, that uh, we'll work with our vendor partners to find other routing as opposed to just through Long Beach in LA, which is, you know, obviously where a number of, of uh, you know, retail uh, cargo ships come into. But there are many other ports that we can try to take advantage of and, and move things around. So we'll certainly be working with our partners. So I do see them lessening. You know, I think that, that you know, there will eventually the, the, the log jam will break up a bit and we'll be able to see a, a better flow into our distribution center and ultimately into our stores. I had, a, I had a, a personal moment about a month ago, Dick. I realized everything in my closet was completely outdated, that I haven't really shot much uh, for the past almost two years of the pandemic. I went out and bought a ton of clothes. I imagine I'm not alone. What are some of the, the hottest selling styles you are seeing in Foot Locker, and what are people gravitating towards? Well, you know, high heat sneakers always drives uh, drives the, the business, you know, so clearly Nike brings the best heat in the industry. You know, we, we've seen a great run on Ultra Boost from Adidas, you know, our, our relationships with uh, Puma, you know, the RSX continues to be a, a great model for us here in North America. You know, we've got a new brand by the name of On out of Switzerland. They, they just went public not long ago. They've had a, a great run as that brand sort of takes hold in, in the U.S. On the, the apparel side, it really is still driven by fleece. You know, fleece is our core consumer's outerwear. And, and as we get into the fall and, and the, the winter season, it, it really is about layering. And they want the, the great fleece pieces that we've got. We just had some really successful launches of our own brand, Locker and, and uh, the East Bay Performance brand that we launched in the, the third quarter. And we're about to launch for the, the our female consumer, the Cozy brand, sometime in December. And, you know, again, it's about comfort. It's about style. It's about feeling really, really good with, with how they look and what they wear. Well, listening to that, I really, uh, I need to go out and get some new sneakers because I am completely off trend, Dick. Uh, last one before I let you go. If I have my math correct, 20% of your market cap is in cash. Footlocker's sitting on a lot of cash. How do you plan to use that? Well, you know, I think as Andrew Page, our CFO, pointed out at the end of our call uh, last week, you know, the, the end of the quarter is just a, a moment in time. Right, we, we, we bought Atmos, we bought WSS, we've paid for WSS, but the, the payment for Atmos would have fallen into the fourth quarter. Likewise, the inventory that we helped to, to elevate, you know, at the end of the, the third quarter has to be paid for. So first and foremost, we're gonna continue to fuel our business. You know, with, with the right inventory, we're going to look for the, the, the right opportunities with our customers to expand capabilities. You know, we've got a good dividend program, a share buyback program that's that's alive and well. And as we see dislocation, we look for opportunities. But, uh, you know, again, we've known each other a, a long time, Brian. I'm a, a guy that feels okay with having cash on the balance sheet. And, you know, we continue to put it to good use. You know, if you look at what we've done throughout 2021, we spent $1.1 billion to, to buy two brands that were our, our fast growth brands that will help us accelerate our customer base and, and our growth in, in Asia. So again, we'd like to look for opportunities, but first and foremost, we're going to fuel uh, the existing businesses that we've got. And we have talked a good bit through the years, uh, Dick, and I can tell you this, I really can't feel my legs. It is very cold out here <laughs> in New York City. Phil Ocracio, Richard Johnson, happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanks for coming on. We greatly appreciate it.